Thank you for joining us for God's Word for the Modern World, New Beginning Baptist Church's Adult Sunday School class. Well, good morning. Uh, we're going to try something a little different here this, today. Uh, yesterday, uh, Sunday morning at church, uh, we had a little bit of uh, technical difficulty again with the equipment. Uh, we're not professionals, so <laughs> we often uh, make some mistakes and don't, things don't turn out the way we want them to. Um, but rather than just uh, not posting anything for Sunday school, I wanted to maybe go over some of the, the scriptures we went over yesterday so that those that are following online uh, will be able to keep up with what we're uh, doing and, and where we're at so that there's not kind of the gap uh, in between lessons, uh, between the last time we met and, and the next time we'll meet. So having said all that, I uh, just want to uh, start with uh, reading the scriptures that we're concerned with today. And we've been studying uh, the whole armor of God. And we were down in verse 18. In verse 18, as we mentioned, it's kind of the uh, one of the brackets around the armor of God. Uh, verse 10 talks about uh, relying on the power of God himself, being strong in the, in the Lord's strength and in his might, the power of his might. And then in verse 18 is the other bracket around the armor of God that talks about prayer and supplication in the spirit. And we're again relying on the power of God to help make that um, armor of God e effective. So let's look at verse 18. It says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. The past few uh, times we've met for Sunday school, we've talked a lot about this verse and, and the praying always and, and, and the importance of praying about everything with all prayer and supplication. And, and the difference between the prayer and supplication, prayer is coming before God in worship, acknowledging that God is the creator. God is the one that supplies everything we have. The supplication, again, is asking God and acknowledging God uh, that he's the one that supplies all of our needs. Now, supplication is not so much telling God, you know, the, the problems and, and the things that we need, because he already knows that. The scriptures are clear. He knows those things. But a lot of the supplication is acknowledging our frailty and that we rely on God. So prayer and supplication is very important, but we also talked about that next phrase that is critical, and that's in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit's the one that we have to rely on to take our prayers and our supplications and, and speak to God in ways we can't even uh, imagine. And then we talked about that perseverance is so important. We have to keep at it. It's, it's a matter of, of hard work and, and persistence that, that we mentioned the, the steadfastness that the Bible talks about. Uh, all those things come into that idea of, of perseverance. We have to work at it and be consistent with it. And then we want to get to, we just started last time, and the last phrase is for all saints. We know that spiritual warfare affects every single saint. And it's a continuous thing. It's something we have to do, uh, deal with every day. Saints around the world, right? Every saint in this church is being affected by spiritual warfare, by trials, by temptations, by suffering. Satan uses all those things against us, and we need to be praying one for another. There's not a single person that we know of in this church that isn't suffering through something. Even if they don't say anything, right? They may be quiet about it, not talk about it, but it doesn't matter. If they're a saint, they're being uh, affected by spiritual warfare, and we need to be praying one for another. 
We certainly need to pray with uh, perseverance and prayer and supplication for those things that we do know about and pray specifically for those, but also for the saints that we don't know exactly what's going on. We still know that they're under persecution. And uh, let's see... In uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, I'll give you a minute and you can turn there and we'll, we'll display the verse here. It says, Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken, but such is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will, with the temptation, also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. This is an interesting scripture, and we've heard it many times. But It's interesting to see that he starts out with a warning. right? Verse 12, he says, Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. It's those times where we think we're doing fine and we've got all this conquered and you know, spiritual warfare is not a problem for us. That's when we fall. And we're in danger of that. But then in verse 13, we need to look at those, those phrases again. He's, it reminds us that, that the temptations, there's no temptation taken <coughs> excuse me, to man that's not common. He says there's no temptation taking you such as is common to man. Every person suffers the same types of trials and temptations that we all face. Satan always wants us to think that uh, you know, your particular problem is unique somehow and that God has singled you out with some sort of problem or temptation or with or tribulation that you're going through that you're, you know, he somehow uh, singled you out to, to you know, persecute you more than others. That's not true. The scriptures are very clear. It's common to man. Everything we suffer is common to man. And we need to remember that because Satan wants you to believe that somehow God is mad at you and is making an exception and making an example of you or something like that. That's what Satan tries to do. He tries to, to deceive us into doubting God's goodness. And it says here that that trial, temptations, the problems we have is common to man, but God is faithful. Yeah, you know, I, I like to highlight and underline in my Bible, and that's one of the phrases I, I, I underline. But God is faithful. Regardless of what we're suffering, regardless of what, how we feel at the moment, we need to remember God is faithful. And he's faithful to deliver. Now, but look what he says here. He says, he's faithful who will uh, not suffer you to be tempted of Above that you are able, but with temptation also make a way to escape. Now, we like to think of that and says, okay, God's going to come along, and when we pray, He's going to take away the problem. He's going to take away the pain. He's going to take away the problem. Because it says he, we're going to escape. But look what the rest of the <laughs> verse says. He says that you might escape, that you may be able to bear it. Sometimes God does take away the problem, take away the pain, take away the temptation, take away the situation. But sometimes he helps us escape by giving us the grace we need each and every day to bear it, to get through it without it affecting us in an adverse way without that situation or problem or temptation affecting the way we think about God, without, it, without Satan being able to tempt us to doubt God that he's faithful. So sometimes God gives us grace to bear it and therefore delivers us, provides a mean of escape 
by going through it with faith in God. So we need to remember that. We need to remember that others are suffering these same things. Look, look with me, turn with me to Galatians chapter 6. Chapter 6, verse 1. It says, Brethren, if any man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another burdens. So, fulfill the law of Christ. He's saying that, again, notice the warning in that, just like we had it over in, in, in 1 Corinthians. There's a warning to take heed here. He says, Ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Okay, why? Considering thyself, lest thou be tempted. When it talks about those who are spiritual, it's those who have this understanding who understand spiritual warfare, those who are praying and making supplication in the Spirit, when we see someone else having problems, who may be you know, uh, losing the battle, if we, if we want to put it that way, we need to come alongside. We need to, as it says, bear one another's burdens. We need to be in prayer and supplication, encouraging that person in the spirit of meekness. We need to understand that just like them, we're susceptible to those same things. Just because they're having a problem right now spiritually with this spiritual battle doesn't mean we're exempt from it. We need to be careful. Always in prayer and supplication is with meekness and the purpose is to restore such a one. To bear their burdens with them. Encourage them. Bring them back and, and help them get to a spot where they can once again trust God and understand that He's faithful regardless of the situation. So we need to understand that this idea of spiritual warfare, the trials and tribulations are common to all men. We know that uh, persecution is real each and every day. And persecution, as we said, we, we typically think of it as those who are not Christians bringing some harm or um, troubles and trials to Christians. And that's the standard definition of persecution. But persecution can also be uh, a little more subtle. Sometimes it's, it's, it's when the pain and suffering and, and things of this life are starting to get us down, Satan comes along and tries to persecute us with those things to get us to doubt God, to get us to, to turn away from God, to get us to, to not listen to what God says in the scriptures and trust that God is faithful and that's going to give us the grace. He, he wants us to doubt those things. And that's, that's a form of persecution also. But the real persecution of, of non-Christians against Christians is going on every day in this world. I, I get an uh, uh, email for, occasionally from an organization called Open Doors. And there's lots of organizations out there. But they focus on uh, persecution uh, of Christians throughout the world. And, and they put out a list every year of, of the worst countries, etc. But they also gave a summary. And this summary I wanted to share because it gives us that, that focus again of that persecution is real and persecution is going on today and maybe coming to America if, we're, if, if God doesn't bring revival. According to the Open Doors, they said that in a 24-hour period, you know, the time that we get up in the morning and we work all day and, we, you know, we go to bed at night and sleep and get up the next morning, at that 24-hour period, they say in that 24-hour period, 13 Christians die. 13 Christians are killed for their faith in Christ. Another 12 will be arrested and imprisoned. Uh, there will be at least five believers kidnapped 
and then typically put into slavery. This is going on in the world today, right now, in different countries around the world. We need to be praying with much prayer and supplication for the saints, not just the ones in our church, not just the ones we know, but around the world. That's why Paul you know, made such a, an emphasis here to be praying always with all prayers and supplication for all the saints. Notice how many times he used that word all. It, 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 it just stresses the importance that we need to persevere. We need to work at it. We need to make it a conscious effort to be praying with supplications for all the saints. We see that this idea of, of suffering for, uh, and persecution is, isn't something new. It's something that we should expect as Christians. In, in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, uh, ch I'm sorry, chapter 3, in, uh, starting in the verse 2, it says, And sent Timotheus, our brother, the minister of God, and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ, to establish you, to comfort you concerning your faith, that no man should be moved by these afflictions. For you, uh, for yourselves, know that we are appointed thereunto, for verily, when we were with you, we told you before that we should suffer tribulation, even as it came to pass. And ye know, for this cause, when I could no longer forbear, I sent to you, um, I, I sent to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter have tempted you, and our labor be in vain. Notice in these verses, he, he, first of all, reminds them and us that we're appointed, there verse 3, we're appointed unto afflictions, we're appointed unto tribulation, we're appointed unto trials and troubles in this world. We shouldn't be surprised. And we need to recognize that that's not uncommon. It's common to all the saints. He also mentions in here that we know this. We should know this in verse 4. And he says, And ye know, okay, that you should suffer tribulations. That's not, shouldn't surprise us. And we shouldn't be saying, Oh, if I'm suffering, there's something wrong, and God doesn't love me anymore, or, oh, God's mad at me. That's what Satan wants you to believe. The scriptures are very clear. God is very open with us and very clear. Christians are going to suffer tribulations, trials, persecution. It's going to happen. That's part of being a Christian, and we know that. And if we know that, we need to be on guard against what Satan does. Notice what he says in here, in verse 5. Lest some, uh, less, uh, excuse me, lest by some means the tempter have tempted you, and our labor be in vain. He's saying, what's going to happen when these trials and tribulations come? If you don't think about the things that you know from the Word of God, the tempter's going to come along and try to convince you, oh, these things are happening to you because God doesn't love you anymore. God doesn't con isn't concerned about you. Oh, you've really sinned this time, and boy, he's not going to use you no more. You know, that's what he, he's doing with this trial and tri tribulation. He, he's punishing you. No, God doesn't punish us out of anger. God doesn't punish one of his children because he's upset. God will ch sometimes chastise. Yeah, some, sometimes trials and tribulations that come in our life are chastisement from the Lord. For, but it's always because he loves us. It's always so that he can restore us to that fellowship with him. It's always out of love. The scriptures are clear about that. He never chastises out of anger. He never chastises 
to punish us. It's always to draw us back, to restore us. So, you know, Satan wants us to believe the opposite. And that's what he's saying here. We have to be on guard. We need to be praying one for another. Right? When you're going through a particular trial, a, a trouble, a, a, a pain is terrible. It can get you down. That's why this verse 18 is so important. Praying always with all prayer and supplication for all the saints. That's important. Because Satan is there trying to tempt every one of us to believe that God is angry. Look at uh, with me to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3 talks about the same kind of thing, but in a slightly different way. Notice he says in, in chapter 3 verse 10, But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me in Antioch, in Iconium, and in Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. That's what we talked about earlier, right? God is faithful to deliver us out of temptations. That's what Paul said. Now, it wasn't always out of the suffering of the persecution, but he always delivered him. He says in verse 13, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. They're deceiving others, not even understanding that they're deceived by the great deceiver. Satan has people out there who will discourage, who will try to discredit the Word of God, who will do all they can to push you down so that you will lack faith in God in times of persecution. What uh, Paul is trying to encourage Timothy here is to remember that, verse 12, Yea, all that will live godly in Jesus Christ shall suffer persecution. And when it does happen, don't listen to the seducers and get discouraged. Don't listen to the great tempter, the devil himself, who will try to get you to doubt God's goodness. Don't listen to those things. Remember, the Lord shall deliver you. That's in verse 11. The Lord shall deliver you. God himself is faithful and will not suffer you to... to uh, Go beyond what you're able. He'll give you grace through the suffering. And he says, we got to be on guard because it shall come. Notice that in verse 12. He says, again, yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. That word shall is important. <clears throat> Because that's a, uh, a definite word. That means it will happen, or it has to be fulfilled. Uh, in in uh, my past in, in, at work, I've worked on some, several uh, committees for uh, regulations. And, and one of the things that uh, they talked about in, in these meetings is when you're looking at wording uh, regulations, there's a big difference between, you know, may, might, or shall. If, if a requirement says you may do it this way, or you, you might do this type of thing, that means there's some flexibility there. You can decide. There's some other things that can affect it and decide whether or not you're going to do it or how to do it. When, when the regulation says this shall be done, you have to do it. It's a requirement. Same way in the scriptures. When you see shall, that is something that is definite. It's going to happen. It will happen. 
It has happened, right? It, it, it's, it's a requirement. That's what he's saying. To live in Christ, you shall, it will happen. You'll have persecution. We've been blessed in this nation. We've been blessed to grow up in America where we've had freedoms of religion. And we've faced very little real persecution. Sometimes, you know, uh, people get angry with us or say something mean to us or maybe even cuss you out if you try to share the gospel or something. But that's not, you know, that's, that's minor persecution compared to, you know, some of the things we read earlier. <clears throat> but we have to remember that no matter what level or type of persecution, you know, Satan's out there trying to get us discouraged. It says, persecution, trouble, trials, these are all things common to man. It shall happen to us. And we need to be praying one for another. We need to be praying with all prayer and supplication for all the saints, because we're all suffering together. We're suffering for the cause of Christ, suffering in Christ himself, who suffered greatly on our behalf. So what we need to remember is that we know these things according to the scriptures. So don't let Satan get us trapped into thinking that something is special about my persecution, is special about my trial, is special about my suffering, and therefore, God doesn't love me anymore. Therefore, God isn't concerned about me. Therefore, God is through with me. All those are lies from the devil. Go back to the scriptures. First of all, remember what God says. This is common to all men. Be in prayer and supplication for others as well as yourself. Seek sometimes prayer from others. And then remember, God is faithful. He's going to provide a means for us to get through this. He's going to give us the grace every single day that we need for that day. Day after day, He gives us grace. Day after day, He gives us what we need to get through. That's what we need to remember. So we'll pick it up there again next week. Uh, and finish up on this idea of the, the, the importance of prayer and supplication in the Spirit. I hope that's helpful, uh, and like I said, we'll pick it up there next week. Thank you for joining us for God's Word for the Modern World, New Beginning Baptist Church's Adult Sunday School Class.